sometimes, in order to feel the most alive. We push ourselves right to the very edge. And so explain to me what you went out there to do. Um, I guess for me it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something really different and really push myself. I definitely felt being a fairly strong runner in, in the mountains that, that I'd be able to move well in, in all conditions. There definitely was a certain element of, of fear, like knowing that I'd never been into mountains that big before. And I just know from my experiences in, in other mountains that things can turn pear shaped in a matter of, of, of a few seconds. Do you think you pushed it too far? No, not at all. When Ryan first mentioned that he wanted to set a fastest known time on the Great Himalaya Trail, I jumped at the opportunity to document it, not thinking too much of what it would entail. We committed we're going to do a project in the Himalayas, and as part of our homework, we found Andrew Porter's recognized FKT. There was just an appeal to it's the fastest crossing of Nepal. The Great Himalaya Trail is not a singular trail, but rather a patchwork of pre existing footpaths that have existed for centuries. The route they had chosen would take them from the Tibetan border in the far west of Nepal, through the Himalaya and its foothills, ending at the Indian border in the east. We're looking at 1,400 k's across the country, 70,000 meters up, 70,000 meters down. So. <laughs> There's been a huge amount of prep, and probably the most prep I've ever put into anything has, has gone into this project, but it's probably the project or the adventure I feel kind of the most unprepared for. It's so big and there are so many variables and so many unknowns. It's a lot of red circles. Our goal was to move as fast and light as, as possible without taking too many risks, but moving fast and light, you're always gonna take some kind of risk and we didn't have sleeping bags or a tent. If you don't plan a project where there's enough risk of stuff going wrong, then you're pretty much within way too much of a safe comfort zone. I want to see how far I can push something. <laughs> Attempting to do it as fast as possible definitely amplifies that, that experience and kind of gave it some parameters. There, there goes your left back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy not to get back in it. The start point of the attempt was in the village of Hilsa on the Tibetan border. We had just over two days to cover the five day trekking route, and due to a lingering winter, would be the first people to cross the pass this season. Uh, going to um, Hilsa, but um, yeah, we started the trek in now. I'm pretty, pretty stoked to get to get going. This stage is just like childlike excited, and I think reality will hit once we get on the route. Namaste. 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 To be honest, we, we also don't have not crossed the scale yet, so like we've been going for almost three days and we haven't covered the distance we want to run in one day. Part of the trail that we have covered now is probably the flattest part of the trail and it's definitely not, not flat. Just looking forward to get to Hilsa now.
seemed to be going all according to plan until probably got about four or five k's away from where we were actually gonna, gonna start. What was supposed to be a fairly easy section, we, we had large sections being completely covered in ice, um, off camber, leading into like two, 300 meter sheer drops. And you can actually see the start and you can't get there. Um, we didn't have the right equipment with us to cross and, and it became quite a bit of a tricky situation. It was really dangerous, to be honest. It, it was a bit stupid. I just don't have enough experience in, in like big mountains. I've done nothing like this before. And then knowing that you're going to sleep a couple of hours, turn around and do it again, just this time in, in darkness. It's pretty sketchy there. Yeah. We're evaluating golf area. I feel like I've had my adventure now. <laughs> this will be the start of our journey. Excited. If I zoom in, this is in exactly uh, the coordinates for our start. Glad to get you. Yeah, finally. It's been, it's been an adventure. I'm glad the difficult journey is done. You can just yeah, start running. The easy part starts now. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really excited to get going now. It feels like it's been a really long build up. I think I've underestimated how hard this is going to be. I guess I always relate everything back to like pure running terms. A thousand four hundred k is like if you break it down into like multiple days, probably isn't like a massive distance. But then I forget to throw in some really big mountains along the way, and anything can happen. It's going to be epic. A little bit nervous. So what's uh, happening here? Okay, so we're crossing about a 50 meter ice section, which is super sketchy. This has the potential to actually stop our whole attempt, so we're just taking it easy. If we slip here, the cliff you see there is probably about a, at least a 300 meter sheer drop down there, so that's not ideal. I think we are over the worst. I was too nervous to get my camera out down, down there. I think my legs are still shaking a bit. Let's check how epic the mountains are there. That's next level. That's rad. Super safe to be here now. Carrying small 20 litre running packs, a few snacks, no sleeping bags, no tents, and no stoves. Ryan and Rena would be relying on the generosity of the Nepali people and the local tea houses along the way for food, shelter, and water. I must say, good. You maybe have some water for us. Thank you very much. The style of attempt meant that they would face many unknowns along the way. What we couldn't plan for at all is where we're going to sleep and how much distance we're going to do. The reality is, on any mountain, but even more so on mountains of this scale, distance and kilometers are really but so hopefully some very helpful Nepalese people will, will guide us along the way. Namaste. 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 And although the Himalaya has some of the most breathtaking landscapes, it's the Nepali people that capture your heart. When we got there, there were one or two ruins, but no people. I was definitely kind of pretty nervous. Got a couple of hours sleep last night. Second out, we found a monk. Other than that, there's not a single person on that map. Hey guys, it's Ryan Sands, South African ultra distance trail runner. For more content like this, click here. And to subscribe to Red Bull, click here. Cheers.